hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, drill press run out. Well, a while back on the show, I did both an assembly video and a review of the Rikon 30-212 variable speed drill press. And I've gotten quite a few comments from viewers that have said, what about the runout? You didn't test the runout. You didn't mention the runout. Well, you know what? I guess I forgot to put it in the video. But it does bring up a great opportunity for me to show you guys how to test for runout. And as well, you can see what the runout is like on the Rikon 30-212. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to talk about what tools you're going to need in order to do this. Well, the main and most essential part that you're going to need in order to measure runout is a dial indicator. And I have one of those magnetic stands for mine. It's an accessory. It just makes things a lot easier. It is not necessary. The only thing that is necessary is this unit right here. And the way it works, it measures in thousands of an inch. And as you uh, are depressing this here, you can see that the dial indicator moves, measuring in thousandths of an inch. Now it's very hard uh, to get it to just go one thousandth of an inch because that is such a tiny, tiny measurement. The other thing that you're ne gonna need is some sort of straight rod, let's say. And that could be something as simple as a drill bit. And for this demonstration, that is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a drill bit. So let's head over to the drill press and see where we start with this whole process. Well, I have a shot made drill press table on my press, as some of you already know. And the first thing I need to do is I need to remove it. The reason for that is my dial indicator base is magnetic and that is how it holds to the stock table. So I've already un, uh, undone the hardware below. I'll just release the, there we go, the lift mechanism. And there is our stock steel drill press table exposed. Well, I have our dial indicator uh, put here on our stock table. I'm just gonna set the magnet just so I don't accidentally knock it off. And then we're going to manually on our bevel gear back here, um, crank this up until our gauge pin is just below the jaws of our drill press chuck. And once we get that in place, we will lock our table down. And once we get that done, we will release our dial indicator, place it over here to be safe for now, and we will install a drill bit into our chuck. Now you want to remember to tighten all three of the holes in the chuck. Uh, you want to make sure that it's well tightened in there. Now if you have a steel rod to set this up with, uh, that's even preferable as you can test up and down here on the rod. However, the lower you get on the rod, the more dramatic and drastic your um, results are going to be. You can't do that with a drill bit because obviously the cutting edge is going to get in your way. So you want to set your dial indicator so that it's touching against your bit, roughly in the center, and once you get that there, lock it down. At this point, it really doesn't matter what the gauge says because we're going to zero it out. So mine has a little knob here that you can loosen and that will allow you to turn the front face in order to set wherever it is right now at zero. So we're gonna set that very carefully. Even the littlest bit of movement will uh, give you a reading on these indicators. They're very, very sensitive. So once you get it zeroed out, we'll tighten up the little set knob here. And there we are set at zero um, on our dial indicator. And we're just going to rotate 
our chuck by hand. You can see one thou out there, and then we're gone into the negative there. There's two, there's three, there's four thou. And then back to zero, and then over to the one. So all in all, between the negative range, below zero there, about four and a half thou of an inch, and here we're at one thou. So a total uh, being out of five and a half thou. Now for most general woodworking, that's acceptable. It depends on how, uh, I guess it depends on how precise you want to be. But where is the fault here? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the chuck. Well, with the chuck removed, I've got everything set back up, except this time I have the dial indicator set to be against our shaft. Um, guys, I want to remind you, these gauges are very sensitive. And let me just show you this here. If I take the handle here and I just wiggle it ever so slightly. Look at the difference there that I'm getting. So a lot of the readings that you could be getting that you think are misalignment or run out could be you jostling the machine. There is enough play in the machine in order to give you false readings. So with everything set, we're just going to turn our spindle ever so slightly and being careful not to move the press at all. Now I am moving it a little, but you can see that as it rotates, that dial indicator is really not moving. We're moving about, oh, well, not even one one thousandth of an inch. And a lot of that is probably from me shaking or moving the machine. So the run out on the actual spindle itself is next to zero. Most of the problems that are associated with run out in a drill press, for the most part, if you have a half decent drill press, most of the problems are created with the chuck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna polish up the Morse taper of our chuck. Well, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this shaft with mineral spirits just to make sure that there's nothing gummed up on the Morse taper shaft of the drill chuck. Now, this one came assembled like this with the Morse taper already installed in our chuck. Um, but you may have a different setup, I don't know. So we're gonna give this a good cleaning here. And then once that mineral spirits is all dried up, I'm going to give it a good polish with Autosol Metal Polish. Well, you guys have seen me use this stuff on the show before. It is my absolute go-to when it comes to polishing any kind of metal. So <laughs> this Morse taper of my chuck is no exception to that. So we'll just use the polish here and a little bit of elbow grease and we will clean this as best we can. And once you get it polished up to your satisfaction, we'll take it back over to the drill press. Now before you install your chuck, just make sure that your jaws are fully retracted inside of your chuck, otherwise you could damage them. So we're just going to put this in place here, I'm going to give it a little tap. There we go, a little tap just to hold it in place for now. We're going to get a block of wood and give it a good wrap home. So we're going to install our half inch bit back into our chuck. There's no saying that this drill bit itself is true. So the first thing that I'm going to test 
is the edge of our chuck here. So with everything set up here again with our dial indicator at the edge of our chuck, we're going to carefully turn it and see what we end up with. There's two thou, and then back, one thou, it's back to zero, and we're back up just, oh, like a hair over two thou. So let's check it now at the actual bit itself. So with our gauge in place, we will just set this to zero so we can see exactly what we're looking at here. There you go, zero. And we once again will just repeat the process and give it just ever so slight turns here carefully, carefully, so that we're not shaking the drill press. And there we have it. So we are just at four thou there. Four thou. So from six thou down to two, or down two thou to four. Again, there's no saying that that bit is true because the edge of our chuck here is actually turning within less than two thou. So it could be that this rod here is out but for my money you know what this is pretty darn close and uh, i'm not too concerned about it at this point in time well just to play around with whether or not that other bit was true i put in a higher quality bit just to see what we kind of readings we would end up with so i'll carefully once again turn this spindle and we're at zero there's one thou, two, oh, didn't make it to three, and it's on the way back down again. So, and back to zero. You can see that I'm moving that there a little bit, but we're looking at under three thou for the run out here with a higher quality bit. Now there is no saying that this bit is perfect either. You would have to have an exact perfect rod to get an exact perfect result. But you can see here that from our initial test, before the cleaning and that sort of thing, when we were six thou out, we are now less than three. That's even more acceptable as far as I'm concerned. And there you have it. Testing run out on the Rycon 30-212 variable speed drill press. Guys, this is a very simple procedure to do uh, with a very minimum amount of equipment. That dial indicator is really the only piece of equipment that you need. And it's helpful for other things in the shop too, such as truing the trunnions of say a table saw to the miter slots, that sort of thing anywhere that you have to test um, a tool or get it perfect or just the way you want it. Um, the in-feed and out-feed tables of a jointer is another place that comes to mind uh, that a dial indicator could be used. Guys, dial indicators are not very expensive, but of course, uh, the better quality one you get, the better results you get. You want to keep in mind that these things are very sensitive and by wiggling the drill press just a little bit, just with two fingers, I was able to get those uh, readings to go plus or minus one to two thousandths of an inch, depending on how much I wiggled. So while you are rotating the chuck, uh, I would be very, very careful uh, that you're not jostling that machine around too much because that can give you false readings. Now at the beginning, um, we got a reading of basically in or around a total of six thou of an inch. Um, 
Is that acceptable? I guess it depends on what you want to do. However, by removing the chuck, cleaning and polishing the Morse taper, as well as um, I didn't film it, but up inside the chuck jaws, I got up there with some cotton swabs and mineral spirits and cleaned out the inside, getting out any of uh, the gunk or residue that may be up inside the chuck, causing you poor results as well. But by doing all of that and then reinstalling the chuck, we were able to reduce that from six thou all the way down to under three. So that's a huge improvement and a much more acceptable uh, plus or minus ratio if you'd like. Guys, even the best straight edges out there are only really milled to one thou over 12 inches or anywhere from 1.5 thou to two thou on a 24, 36 inch straight edge. So really we are in the ballpark there when it comes to how this drill press uh, kind of rates as far as accuracy and the lack of runout. Guys, this show is not necessarily about um, the Rikon drill press, not at all. This show is teaching you or showing you how to use a dial indicator to test your drill press at home and one of the things that you can do to improve your results. Um, that would be removing the chuck, cleaning, polishing, reinstalling and checking again, as well as cleaning the inside of the chuck. There are many things that can change your results and make them vary. Things like the drill bit. How true is that drill bit? Really, who knows? If you're using a steel rod, how true is that steel rod? You don't know that either. You didn't manufacture it and you sure as heck didn't test it. Wiggling of the drill press is another factor that you've seen that can change the results, um, as well as the quality of your dial indicator. Uh, I mean, if you have a $1.99 dial indicator that you got at Bargain Barn, uh, chances are your results are not going to be as accurate as one that may have cost you, say, $25 at a more reputable dealer or a more reputable name brand. Guys, this is one of those things that when you own power tools, you can get obsessed over how true or how well they run. Don't go too crazy on yourself over this. Um, as tools get used, as they, uh, you know, get gunked up with sawdust, as the vibrations take hold of them, that sort of thing, those results change. Because way back when I first installed this drill press and assembled it, the runout was less than 2,000. So now it's gone up a little bit. And you know what? I'm sure that if I wanted to tinker around with it some more and take that chuck back off, polish it and clean it some more, clean the inside, get myself, you know, another bit that was more straight and true than the one that I used, I could probably improve the results that I got today. But less than 3,000? I mean, I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you've taken something away from this show that is going to help you in your shop and help you test your drill press for any run out that you might have to help solve your problems. Remember, remember that a large portion of drill press run out issues are caused by the chuck. And sometimes the only solution to that problem is to get rid of that old inferior quality chuck and to buy a higher quality one to install on your press. If the shaft, once you test that, is running true as ours was here today, then chances are it's your chuck that's throwing you out of whack and it's time to throw it to the curb. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this for yourself and tune up your own drill press. And I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.